Man, I need my phone. Hold on, y'all. I gotta get my phone. Man, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. I'm waiting on my guest. Make sure. Can y'all hear me? Can everybody hear me good? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? That's all I want to know. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hold on, gang. Hold on. Hold on, gang, gang. Yo, dang, why is this thing doing this? All right, y'all, hold on. I'm going to go out and I'm going to come right back because apparently we're having some difficult tests. See, this is why I'd be fighting with my, with my people, man. Oh, wow. A live set. Okay. Y'all actually seeing what go on a live set. Cause cause I was literally in the middle of training. And I'm pretty sure can't nobody hear me. So can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Tired of these no. Because I don't think nobody can. I know y'all can in the gym, damn it. I don't need y'all to say nothing. Talking about the people on the TV. I can hear y'all fine. But I don't think the people in the TV can hear me. And we still getting red day. Man, I got it. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Somebody, not y'all. Yeah. Damn. Some of the people on the here. Y'all can hear me? Because I can't tell if y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Can you give me a, can you give me a hands up? Oh, oh, we on. Okay, my, my boy about to come on too. Where he at? They here. They here. Let me bring him in here. Man, what in the heck is going on? He in the room, guest. Add to spray. There he is. Yo, hold on, brother. Hold on before you even get started talking, because I got to make sure my stuff together, because I can't hear you. So because I can't hear you, I got to go in this thing, make sure I got these settings right, because I can't miss nothing that you about to say, what we about to talk about. Ooh, we. Mike. You need headphones. No, I don't. It'd be better that way. I'm not listening to you, all right? It, it will be better, okay? But I just did this, all right, the other day, and I didn't have to, all right, okay? So can you just, can you, can you just cut me some slack in here, all right? Oh, okay. Focus on your workout. Don't focus on what I got going on over here. This is why I do live stuff, so that people would know that this thing ain't a, ain't a game. It's live. Glad y'all still seeing it, because I can't find out why my audio ain't here. My speaker, my microphone. OK. OK. Doo -doo. Hey, if this thing, um. Wait a minute. Let me do this. I'm almost ready, y'all. Y'all call y'all call me when I wasn't ready. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Cam on more settings audio. Okay, let's try that then. Hey, if anything happens, y'all, if anything happens, stay. Oh, wait, I hear something. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Marvin, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I heard everything you said. Oh, see, let go then. That's all you have to tell you. What's going on, brother? I ain't even know. What I heard you, I heard you the whole time. I heard you oh, the whole time. <laughs> what's going on, brother? Oh, no, I'm good, man. What's up? Well, first of all, welcome to finally welcome to Ray's Tape, man. You know what, Marvin? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm gonna say my thing, man. I feel disrespected, man. Me and you, we go way back. 
Well, I say go way back. We go damn the way back to where when I had spice on. Why the hell you just not coming on raise take, man? You be these folks be thinking I don't be knowing you and stuff. I be trying to tell them, like, man, I'm telling y'all, I knew when he was playing football. What y'all mean that my boy? What y'all talking about? I got a ride with him for Miro's games. But anyway, I can't get it off my chest. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, how you feeling down there, man? Man, like a million bucks, dog. I'm ready. Well, look here. Go ahead and, and, and tell the folks as if they didn't know who you was, who you are, and then we're going to get into all these Q&A. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. For those of y'all that don't know me, I'm Marvin Bracy Williams, formerly known as Marvin Bracy from Orlando, Florida. Uh, went to FSU for football and track. Played uh played football for a year. Actually, I redshirted for a year. Left, went pro in track, signed with Adidas, did that for about three years. After the 2016 Olympics, I decided to go play football. I was with the Colts in 2017, Seahawks in 2018. I did like this new league they had called the AAF in mm -hmm. 2019. And then the league folded. I decided to come back to track, came back in 2020. Well, let, let me ask you this. What? What brought you back to track from, from the football field? Because normally I'm always, you know what I'm saying, talking about, you, you know my spiel, I'm always talking about the finance and the financial side, the difference between our sport, that sport. What made you come back to, to track after football? Uh, two things, actually, man. Um, I broke my arm. I broke, uh, I broke the owner in my right arm the first game of the new league in 2019. And then mm -hmm. all the opportunities stopped coming. You know what I'm saying? When you... When you're one of those guys that's a, that's a high draft pick, you know, you keep getting opportunities. People always give you, you know, you get a shot. You see one dude on one team for a couple of years, it didn't work out. Another team pick him up, don't work out. Another team pick him up, and you just kind of become a journeyman. But when you, mm -hmm. you know, draft it, no experience, you when you get out, it's it's kind of hard to get back in. So it was like, man, mm -hmm. I think too, one thing for certain, that for certain, I'm going to be fast, you know. So I hadn't broken no legs, so I came back, you know, and I seen people taking over the game, and I'm like, hold on, man. You know, I can I can throw my name back in you know throw my name back in the hat. So that's kind of what brought me back. Okay, so that leads me to ask my next question then, because you just said you went track, football, back to track. What made you leave track? Because when you did track the first time, that was like when I was going out the dope. So what made you leave track and go to football? Uh, a couple of things actually, man. Um, for starters, I was with Adidas, and mm -hmm. it was time for me to get a new deal, and they basically had gave me an option year and for those of you who don't know what the option year is it's like they give you an extra year added to your contract on the same you know the same money value it's kind of like a prove it deal like okay we're gonna see what you're about and you can either you can i mean you can take them to the you know you can take them to the cleaners if mm -hmm. you have a season but you have a bad season they're probably gonna pick you back up or they're gonna pick you back up for less than what you was making and i knew that you know 2017 was gonna be a good year for me so i wanted my agents to lock in a good deal mm -hmm. It was like, oh, they're gonna bring you to the option year. And I'm like, man, this ain't gonna work out. I ain't gonna have no money after this. So, you mm -hmm. know, I, the, the contracts they give not even the, the people down here in the NFL making, you know, more than us. So it was yeah. like, if I get it, no, I'm making the same amount of money. Yeah. You know, and all it takes well, well, then what I wanna know then, because I know a lot of people also wanna know. So, how was you able to make that transition? What I mean, make this not transition, because like you play football, but like, how did you even get to the NFL from track? Like, who did you call? And I said, like, how did that happen? Did you go to a trial, or okay. you just it was like, I knew a, um, I knew a guy in Orlando by the name of uh, Trevor Anderson. He kind of knew some people. Well, actually, Mike Cope. He went to Arkansas with Tyson. Went to Arkansas, yeah. Played with uh, the Giants. Played with the Cowboys. You know, he got some NFL experience. I reached out to him and told him, you know, what I was trying to do. He linked me with somebody and then linked me with an agent by the name of Joby mm -hmm. Brain. Shout out to my man Joby. Man, he gave me an opportunity. You know, and Soon as I talked to him, he was like, "Oh yeah, I sign you. Um, sign me." It was like, "Hey man, I'm gonna get you into the rookie mini camps, but you gotta go to uh, you gotta go to a pro day." So I went mm -hmm. to pro day at FSU, the little FSU pro day after the draft. Um, I mean, I ain't really get too many offers there, you know. It was like, ah, you know, he's a track guy, or whatever, whatever. And he started getting me into these rookie mini camps. I did the New Orleans rookie mini camp. I did the um, I did the Carolina rookie mini camp. Mm -hmm. And then you know, from there, you know, people kind of see you, get a feel for you. But then nothing, no, no calls had really came through. I'm like, okay, so you know, he was like, just sit tight. I got this. NFL training come, come up. The Cowboys cut Lucky Whitehead and yep. on another speed guy. They called me up, but they flew me out to Oxford, California, where they do their training camp. I end, I end up going and I think I ran like 443 in a 40. You know, I'm coming in as a track guy. They thinking, hold on, man, this dude supposed to be fast, fast, you know? Like I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be freak to them. So they didn't sign me. 
I come back home five or six days later, the coach call, like, hey, we want to bring in for a tryout. I go, I ran like four, four, three, two, something like that in the 40, signed on dotted line, you mm -hmm. know, went through the training camp process, and that's kind of how I got started. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna ask you the hard questions because that's what I do on raise tape. I, I like to ask the hard questions. Which one you like more? Oh, football, easily. Why? Um, it's a little. It is. It is. You know, more exciting. You know, yeah, the games are longer and stuff like that, but the pay is greater. The game is a little bit more exciting, and it's just so many intricacies in football that just make it just just the best, man. Like, mm -hmm. and it's not like you relying on yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? You got a team. You got, you know, you got the offense, you got the defense, you got the special team, you got coaching, you got game plan, you got so many things that go into it that just make it in the preparation for it is so different. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, so di y'all don't see what they go through during the week. You know, y'all just see Sunday and think, mm -hmm. oh, again, no, nah, I mean, there's so many things that go into that week that. Yep. Yep. You know, you yep. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, because I train a couple, well, I train a lot of NFL players, so I, I already know how they schedule to go. So, you know, which is funny because, so let me, let me, let me get your take on this. I've noticed that our seasons are kind of offset, right? So normally during football season is track and field off season, right? Right, right? And then in track season, there's nothing. So I've always been like, man, you know what? Why isn't that track athletes like yourself? Why isn't that we're crossing over and doing both? You know what I'm saying? Like doing um, foot soon as the track season over with, because you in shape. You in shape? You yeah. shape. Soon the track season over with go right to football and try and get picked up somewhere for football for your off-season training. And right. then after football season, you know what I'm saying, provided your team make it this far, though, February, you know what I'm saying, February or whatever, I don't see where it could be a disconnect to where you can't go from February, okay, March, okay, now let me switch right back to track and start track in March and be ready in June. So, do, so I've always looked at like, man, like if we actually learn to just merge both of them, it would benefit both sports because it's like, bro, we ain't doing shit in the off season. Well, let me give it to you like this, man. Um, it's hard. Listen, I, I fall training is hard. Like I ain't knocking what track going through, but mm -hmm. I ain't a lot of people ready to commit to you coming in five straight weeks, mm -hmm. 6 a.m. And you not leaving the facility until like 7, 8, 9 p.m. Going to the hotel, going to bed, coming and doing it all over again. Listen, you in the facility, you got all the, you got the meetings. Like you, you come in, eight a.m. special teams meeting. That mm -hmm. means like eight to maybe nine thirty. You on the field at mm -hmm. ten to twelve, twelve fifteen. If you're doing your twelve thirty, if you're doing extra work, you got a mm -hmm. break twelve to two. That can eat. That's eat treatment. Whatever you need to do to get your body back right. Then mm -hmm. you again at like two o'clock. Meetings go from two to like five forty-five. You got special teams, offense, defense, receivers. You got all these meetings you're going through. Then you go back downstairs, change, go to the field for a walkthrough. A walkthrough is not a walkthrough. Like, I, it is not a dress rehearsal. You are, <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. It's full speed, just no pads, no real contact. You go, it's, mm -hmm. an hour, it's an hour practice. You do that from, like, six to seven. If you're a rookie, you know, like myself, you come in and you got extra film. At, mm -hmm. like, 45, so you go eat dinner, come back for extra film. Then you might do some more film and then treatment. You go back to the hotel, it's 10, 10 30, but you gotta go straight to sleep and be up again at six. So and it's five weeks of doing this. So when you when you the guys, them 53 guys y'all see that make the team, yeah. Listen, <laughs> there's a reason why. This here's how I look at it. All the meetings and all that stuff shouldn't scare nobody. And the reason why I say it shouldn't scare nobody is because if last time I checked, the, the league's minimum was like 350000 You know what I'm saying, right? 480. It's 480 now? 480. Okay, I'm going to meet all damn day then. Oh, this <laughs> what you talking about? Hey, 480? Man. When I sit there and get tired, I'll be like, 500000 Come on, bro, what's up? I made the Olympic team. The highest pinnacle of this sport. I made the Olympic team and walked away. I Listen, <laughs> about that. Come on now. <laughs> come, come, come on now. Come on now. I, look, look, you gotta tell me. Now, let me ask you this because I know, you know, I played football, didn't make it to those levels because track kept taking me away from football. Literally, every time I ran, I only ran track to be fast in football because I was on the yeah. back. And I kept getting, I kept winning shit. Like I kept winning state, kept winning U.S. Juniors. And then when I walked on, you know what I'm saying, wanting to go to Auburn, I'm still trying to play football. I go out there, I keep winning. I kept running too damn fast. So it's too many from football. Yeah. So, uh, so 
the one thing I tell people is because I play football, and, and again, this is no disrespect to any track person, but because I play football, I think that that drive in track is different. It's harder to beat me because it's a it, football is competitive. Like when I say competitive, it's competitive day in, day out. It ain't you fighting for your for your position. You is fighting to be on the bus. You is it's competitive every day in the locker room. You fighting to get to the shower first. Man. So <laughs> I know for me, I took that mentality to track, and that's where it helped me in track and field because I I couldn't accept losing. You know what I'm saying? Like I I, I what's this losing shit? You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Did, did, did that kind of help you on your your comeback? Not not the beginning, but after you left the NFL and everybody was like, oh, man, brace it. Well, he ain't going to do nothing because you don't win the NFL and all this, and now he running with Nike. Did, did that NFL, that football mentality, literally give you that drive to be like, all right, I'm going to show y'all? Now, it's funny that you say that because uh, Rainer, you know, my coach, Rainer, actually, mm -hmm. he be making – he be talking about that, you know what I'm saying? Or when I, he'll know, like, I'm hurting or, you know, I'm feeling sore or tired. And then he, hey, Ray, how you feeling today? Man, I'm, I'm good, coach. You know, I'm good. Mm -hmm. like, I'm great. Now, how you feeling for real? Because he know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, with that football mentality, man, like, you can't come out there being, oh, uh, you know, you know, you know, some trap people are, oh, I'm sore today. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Nope. laughs> you are you so? Oh, next man up. Come on. Listen, you 100%. And like mm -hmm. you said, so you're not only competing, with the cornerbacks and the safeties and the linebackers, you competing with the receivers next to you. So yeah, yep. they helping you, but they trying to they trying to beat you off for a job because you got in training camp, you got seven, eight, nine, ten receivers, and y'all all fighting for reps. So you got to get all the reps you can get, and you got to do mm -hmm. it to the best of your abilities. And if you're a younger guy, you are getting less reps, and you know, man, there's so many things that's going into it. it ain't just you sign up and you're on the team. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. All right, well, let's go and switch over to some of this track stuff then. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and switch over to track stuff then. So last year, you know, you know, I, I support you no matter what. And I was sitting there like, I don't know why y'all why they not giving this dude no lanes. What what do you think is the reason why, even with Prefontaine, like you was dropping the times, but they wouldn't lend you in? You tell me how you felt about that and 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 how and why. Man, I'm not gonna lie. Like I always, all my career, all my career, even when I was with Adidas, I went, I was dying to run in Prefontaine. Just watching on TV, it just looked like the meat. You know what I'm saying? It just looked mm -hmm. fun, the atmosphere, everything. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm Nike now. You know, I done ran good this year. I'm gonna get me. You know, I'm gonna get in. Like I'm a shoe in. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I got, I got kind of cocky with it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be there. You know, I done put in the work. I'm gonna go down and do my thing. And I've. I'm sleep. I'm wake. I wake up one morning and somebody sent me a screenshot of the first eight lanes. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. I see a couple names that okay, yeah, I would put them in here too. Mm -hmm. right, name, I'm like, hold on. Now. All right, I'm like, but I'm like, okay, wait a minute. They got nine lanes. It's gonna be straight. Mm -hmm. Hey, I get another text. The nine lane, it go to Craybon. I'm like, hey, come on now. Hey, I'm hot. Like, I don't give a damn what school he went to. Like, come on now. Yeah. I don't care about that organ stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Back to him, it just, I was like, come on now. And so I was, I was, I was, I was hurt, bro. But it's like at the end of the day, man, I've been around this sport so long. I was raised by Tyson in this game. I was trained with Tyson at 19. You know, so for me, man, you just, you just can't, you just gotta keep the do. Hey, listen, I can only race where I'm welcome. And I can only yeah. race. So, you yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just gotta. Man, I, I'm trying to remember, though. I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was. Before that, though, your 85 came before pre or after pre? The first one came before pre. Yeah, the first one before pre, right? And then the second one actually still technically came before pre. It was like four days before in Memphis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. Um, You know, because, you know, we've been in this thing. We've been in this thing since forever. Um, Prefontaine. We just gonna call it what it is. Prefontaine has always been one of the most pro, most prolific political races ever, ever, ever. And I, you know, I gonna tell just like my little spiel with Prefontaine. Same thing with me. Um, I remember two thousand nine, the year that me and Mike was, you know, battling out here and our things. That's why I felt like when you dropped nine eight, I was like, oh, he gonna be in there now, because I remember I was in um Hanglo, well. First, I went to Serbia, and I dropped 10.09, right? And I left Serbia, and I went to Hanglo, 
And this was back when 1009 was still fast. You know, this right. is 2009, 12 years ago. And then I went to Hanglo. And the first round of Hanglo, I went 1008. And then Sharandi won it with 999. I went 1001. That same night, I and I'm still in Hanglo. That same night, John, my agent hit me up and said, Ray, you want a plane tomorrow morning? I was supposed to go to Berlin. But then Nike said, no, we want Ray here. Okay. Right. So what they literally did was, I don't know if this year, that was the year that they already had the, um, the race set. Prefontaine had two races, and they didn't really call the A and the B race. They had Mike and everybody in the evening session, what they're going to call it, and they had me and Ivory Williams and all us in the morning session. So what they did was they literally said, we're going to put in another 100 just so Ray and Ivory, they're back when Ivory running. Just right. so Ray and Ivory can get in. They look what they said. So they create a whole nother hundred. I won the morning session. Mike won the e evening session. They paid the exact same payout for both races. Literally the exact same payout. They flew me in on that Tuesday. I was in Oregon an entire week. So based off my own experience, I was like, oh shit, man, race finish, I'm playing tomorrow. The <laughs> so then when you didn't get, I was like, man, what the hell going on? Like, like I I'm I'm baffled. I'm like, that's when I started, you know, tweeting like. Bro, how y'all not gonna let this man in the race? Nah, bro, he just dropped not today, like three days ago. He's supposed to be on a plane coming to Free Fontaine. Man, I listen, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I got when after Memphis, I'm like, okay, I ran what nine, I ran 988 in the prelims. Yeah. And 985. I'm like, okay, like I had my agent, like, bro, they might, they might, you know what I'm saying? They might shake something. Like, we still got about four days. Like, ah, right, listen, man, y'all fly me straight from here. I go now. Like, I ain't no waiting. I watch listen, man. I watched Free Fontaine from Tyson Couch. We watched it together. Well, let me ask you this then. How did that make you feel sitting there watching it, knowing knowing I just dropped 9-8 and I'm watching Prefontaine on TV? Nah, how did that make you feel? Listen, man, I'm saying, I'm, man, Tyson can see it in my face, man. Like, he was just like, man, don't even, you know how he talk, man. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You ran it. <laughs> <laughs> you ran it. I'm hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, though. Hey. Hey. Well, well, how how your training been feeling now? How, how how you feeling now? Man, I came back on fire. You know what I'm saying? Like I never really lost form, and everything just mm -hmm. been it's just been trending up. To be honest with you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So of course you know. For the past month, they've been talking about mirror old games. You've been my pick to win. <laughs> you heard? No, I've been telling everybody. I'm like, look here, man. Look. The money. Respectfully, put your money down, Dick. I'm telling you, the way ain't gonna win it. I, I I tell you why I picked you the same way I explain to everybody else. I say, first of all, I always look at this stuff from an athlete standpoint, not a track analyst. I look at it from an athlete standpoint. Okay, from an athlete standpoint, Marvin Brace is pissed off. That's one. All right. Two, he didn't get no races last year. Okay. Because he didn't get no races, his body didn't get torn up. His body is fresh and prime. Like he's straight. He dropped nine eight nine eight and went and sat down. Why? To my giving no races. He didn't have. He couldn't. His body could not burn out. So now, respectfully, even your training partner. You know, I love him there. I say, Trayvon just left Tokyo yesterday. <laughs> like, man, we just got back. Like, let's just call it what it is. He can't be as ready as his training partner when his training partner didn't put the miles on his body that he did last year. But his training partner can go out the blocks just as equally fast. He's already went 6'4 before. It ain't like it's the territory his body ain't never been in. His body been on this 6'4. It ain't no way he never been. And this 6'4 came before last year. So what you want me to believe is somebody who's already went 6'48 just dropped 9'8 and 9'8 and the block start I watched him do right there, he left everybody. He trained next to one of the fastest starters. He's a fast starter. And y'all want me to respectfully pick Christian Coleman, who I ain't seen do nothing in two years? That's asinine to me. Like, ain't no way in hell I can't, I can't make that pick. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a gambling man. I, I'm telling everybody. I go to Vegas, whatever. I can't make that pick because if you giving me this lineup that I'm looking at, nah, I got to go with Marvin Brayson because – Again, respectfully, everybody in the race can win it, but it's the time of year. Like, nah, man, Brace is going to win that hands down. Like, 
he too fresh. <laughs> he fresh with everybody, literally. And on top of that, I know him. He's pissed. <laughs> so get what? When it go off, when it go off on Saturday, I can assure you, he ain't going up there just to be racing, y'all. He All going right. up there because he's still pissed off, but happened last year. It is hard to beat somebody from zero to 60 who is angry. <laughs> right. And people, people look at it, you know, they look at it from, you know, a favoritism type, you know, uh, fan type standpoint, where it's, oh, you know, well, listen, man, we, we, I don't, I don't, I don't expect Christian to come in here and, and, and be a slouch. You know what I'm saying? I don't expect mm -hmm. Ronnie uh, and I train with Trey Bond, so I already know, you know, what, yeah. we're with, but, you know, like you said, everybody, you know, everybody picks the favorites or whatever, not understanding that, but we, we all train hard. Like we, we, yeah. we, you know what I'm saying? We train just, and people can get better. Like, you know, people, everybody can get better. So they mm -hmm. don't, see, you know, the behind closed doors stuff. They just think, like, we ain't finna come in. I ain't finna come in and lay down. I went, I, I went raised like that. I ain't finna come in there and just, oh, here you go. You know, here you go to, no, I'm not finna do that. I'm coming to hit a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been working for this. So, mm hmm. Mm hmm. But, they so, think that, so, but everybody else is gonna come in here and just run so automatically. Man, listen, this ain't that. Nah, nah. It, it's, it, it, it's always going to be a dog fight. And I don't think people understand that. Like, and, and that's why I, I always talk about it so much on Rage Take. Like, no, y'all don't get it. Like, I'm talking to y'all like an athlete. And yeah. it's the same thing I was saying when uh, everybody was like, you know, again, I always say, no disrespect. But when everybody's like, oh, man, CC back, it's over with. I'm saying like, don't, I don't think y'all get how disrespectful that is to everybody <laughs> else who <laughs> are traded. Like, you just going to say because this, man, again, because of his title or whatever, nobody, everybody else is going to bow down and be like, oh, man, CC back. I guess we can stop. That shit, no. <laughs> they really don't, <laughs> like, they really don't understand like, that. I, I've, I've seen a couple of shows, man, and, you know, I've seen a couple of, I've seen a couple of the comment section, and I'm just, you know, I just be laughing because it's like people really don't understand, like, where we ain't just going to hand him the crown, you know what I'm saying? He's a great athlete. He just got to come take it. Everybody chasing the same crowd. We ain't just gonna be like, oh damn, Christian here today, man. I guess I'm gonna run uh six six and no, bro, we work too. Hey, oh, man. Exactly. Hey, exactly. And that's why I like to tell the story when folks find out about the night in New York when I raised boat at my gym. And everybody be like, Oh man, you was in that race. How did it feel? Horrible. I cried <laughs> that night. <laughs> like, I had to tell people, like, no, no, no. After that race, I literally walked down Times Square crying. I'm crying because I wanted to win. I don't give a damn was no Usain Bolt in the race. I don't give a damn Tyson Gaze in the race. I don't give a damn Mike Rogers in the race. We all are here for a reason. <laughs> like, if we all on this line, it's because every one of all of us fast. Right. So now when you when you put that into perspective, that's what I be saying, like, when, to my fan base and stuff, like, nah, y'all, you can't do that because the way we look at it, any given day, you can get it. Every time that we get in them blocks, it's not a single sprinter on that line who think I'm not about to win. Right. It don't matter who beside you. It don't matter if you got a sub who don't win 20 sub 10s. It don't matter if you got tight. Right. It don't matter what your practices have been saying. You, when you get in them blocks, is y'all finna get it. Right. Yeah. No, they just, like you said, man, they just don't understand. And, you know, the man's a great athlete. The dude, the, dude, the, yeah. dude, and the, the titles and, the man has done his thing. But, you know, like you said, it is, you know, it's low key disrespectful to us, to people that's still working and, getting better and that's how I've been racing. You know what I'm saying? They really, like, they going blind. Like, so, hey, it is what it is, man. Like, he just got yeah. to put on a great performance. Like, you know, it is. he know that. He, he know. And that's the beautiful part about it, too, that, and they would always tell people, like, anything, like, like I always say, I'm talking from an athlete. The same thing I'm telling y'all, I would tell CC the same thing because CC said the same thing. Like, we, like, we all athletes. Like, trust me, we all, well, I'm saying, right, when it comes to the sprinters, and it come to top nation sprinters, and you talking about that top eight? Oh no, nah, bro, ain't no separating us. Like, like we 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 right here, and that's the thing. Like again, I can only use my career, and like I explain to people, yeah, both went nine five. The next person was Tyson at nine eight, and then Asafa. That's just three. The rest of us is right there nine nine ten zero. So it ain't like we just some ruler poots in the race. So I totally get what you're saying, and I'm glad that. You saying it too is like, nah, bro. Like we all, we all gunning for the same thing for the right. same title, same thing, same title. Let me ask you this, then. Going forward, what is your plan for the season? Let me ask you that. 
I mean, I plan on, uh, you know, I'm going, I got a full indoor season, got a schedule already. I'll start mm-hmm. with, start with Milrose. I got a New Balance uh, next week. Mm-hmm. I actually got me a couple of races overseas um, and then USA's. And then, you know, hopefully I go do what I got to do on to Serbia. And then, you know, we'll, we'll kind of figure out the outdoor schedule from there. You know, it depends on what kind of shape we in because, you know, mm-hmm. USA's and everything's getting pushed up. World's got pushed up. So we may not get a bunch of races, even when we don't mm-hmm. want to not get a bunch of races yeah. before you know, USA's and just kind of go from there. So you pretty much are, um, hold on, see, I'm doing something. So you pretty much are gunning for world champs, for indoor <laughs> world champs, you say like that. I've been to two and I got, I got second in 2014 I and I got like seven in 2016. That's one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I got to try to give me a title, man. Yeah. I ain't mad. I, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to be honest with you. Your, 20, your 2016 performance kind of let me down. <laughs> I mean, that shit hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. 2016 <laughs> performance. I was like, man, what the hell? My it ain't, it's mean. not. It's not. It's not a viable excuse. But that was the year they put all three rounds in the same day. Man, I was hurt. Yep. And I was like, man, listen. <laughs> and then listen. I'm like, okay. So that's that's the that's the year when software dropped 644 and. In the semis, and I was in the semifinal with him, and I was like, "Ain't no way, ain't no way, this man." I'm talking about cruising. I'm like, "Get out of here, bro! They ain't here, no. I ain't. I'm gonna get him in the final. I'm gonna get him in the final. He ain't gonna do that again." And that, lo and behold, we get out. All I see is red. I already know who that is. Up the street, but nothing I can do about it. Hey, you know what? Let me ask you this then. Tell me what what's your favorite race? That you've done so far and the worst race. So you said my favorite race. Yeah. Like like the one like uh, your whole career, what race can you like anytime somebody be like, what's that one race that you was like, I'm on? What race is that? Okay, uh take you back. 20 2015. It was the first time I ran 995. I first time I ran under 10 seconds. So I mean, a lot of people don't know this story, but coincidentally, the race was May 20th, which actually is my son's birthday. Uh, he was born in 2018, three now. Okay, congratulations, congratulations. And um, so I was in uh, I was in Doha when Gat dropped 974. Yep, that was amazing. Standby list. So for those who don't know, standby list is like they fly you in, give you a room and everything, but you don't have a lane. You basically nope. open somebody, you know, pull, pull out. You know what I'm saying? And they just kind of insert you. So you come, you mm-hmm. warm up like you're getting ready to race. And if you see all eight guys walk into that car room, you might as well go ahead and cancel Christmas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to Doha, I'm on standby. And I was feeling good. And I'm like, man, I told, I told my I told my agent at the time, I was like, bro, I think I think I would have did something here. I ain't said I would have won, but because I mean, I already run a set nine seven everywhere. We go to Beijing. I go to Beijing, you knowing the bird's nest. Got come there. I'm like, why is he here? Like, why is it's a world chop? Why are you here? You run Diamond Leagues, bro. This is a world challenge. It ain't nobody. Here. Why are you here? It was me, him, DeAndre Batson, uh, Sue was in that race, Mike Rogers mm-hmm. was in that race. And so I don't know what happened like two or three days before the race. Guy and Dennis, a whole team, end up leaving. They left the meet. So now you know everybody walking around like, okay, I got this. I got this. I hit the, I, I hit the line. Boom. And I see Mike out of the corner of my eye. I'm thinking he actually won. So if anybody go back and watch the video, I throw my arm around him because I see 995 on the clock. I'm like, okay, I was close. I know I ran nine seconds. Oh, I remember this whole thing that you're talking about. Keep going. They brought me the flowers. I was like, yep. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm here. I arrived. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I had never known what it felt like to run nine seconds in a meet. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, just, it just felt different. Everything was just clicking. And from there, I went to Birmingham. I ran 997 in the prelims, 993 mm-hmm. in the PB again. I'm like, okay, now my body kind of, you know, adjusted to, you know, what's going on and flying overseas and being able to run fast. But, you know, not everybody, you know, not everybody put great performances down over there. So, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to do that, man, like it was, it was special. L- let me ask you this before I get to the worst race. Let me ask you this. Because I know what it felt like, you know, the, the, the one, two, three, the four times that I went sub 10, it didn't ever count. Let me ask you this. Did your sub 10s feel easier than your 10 twos? Yes. <laughs> you trying to tell people? Everything, everything was just clicking. It was like, yeah. I, didn't, 
I ran that fast. That's why I'm, I hit the line. I'm like, okay, that was, that was, that was quick. Like in the yep. and I story about when me and Trey ran in Milmar, mm -hmm. run, and I swear, like, I come out by my driveway. It felt like I took like two revolutions, mm -hmm. and the line came. Mm -hmm. first, you know, I'm leading the race to like 60, 70. I'm like, oh yeah, I got him today. <laughs> but kept going. <laughs> So we hit the line. I'm like, so we we get to the little little check in, to the little cool down tent after, and I'm looking at him like, bro, you that felt like not something. He was like, no, that felt like not eight. Nah, bro, like I took like two steps after my drive phase, and we was at the line. I'm like, yeah, like, okay, that did feel kind of easy. I'm like, bro, I don't know that. I don't, I don't know if that was real. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I ran ten I ran ten eleven last week. I don't know if that was. <laughs> I don't know if that was real. We say we say we got we got two in the race. Take and see if race say this is real time or not. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't, I looked at him, I was like, bro, I don't know. Like, I don't, we ran 10 in the prelims. I was like, bro, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do it again. The the one thing that I will say that I noticed about you, and I, you've had this forever, your, um, your front side mechanics. I tell people all the time, like, like, Warren Bracey got one of the best front side mechanics in the game if you just watch him. And I feel like last year, for me, just watching you, knowing you, being around for, for so long, I feel like your 9 eights last year came because your lift got even better than – you've always had front side mechanics. You've never had bad mechanics. But it's like your lift was so much better last year to where it's like, oh, shit, like this, he really picking him up, putting him down. And what I mean by picking him up, putting him down is just that, like, no, it's picking him up, putting him down in front. So do you feel – did you feel like that too, like, like I've always had the front side. That's why I've been in run sub ten. But I'm able to do nine eight now because I'm stronger, or is it because like you you know? Just tell me tell me what you feel like when you hit them nine eights. On well, the, the very first one, you know, felt a little aki because I'm like, okay, like we it's, it's only you know it's four people in a race. You know, everybody pulled out once we got to the car room. We mm -hmm. had and it was I think we had like Johan, uh, Ta, uh, Taekwondo, Tracy. And a couple other dudes, like when we get into we go into the car room, like you know, they walk back to like a tent they, and it was just, you know, us two in the middle, and we had two dudes on the outside. So, you know, it felt like practice. It was like, okay, but that came way too easy. We're gonna have to do mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, Trey obviously goes to USA's and does what he does, you no know, runs 980 in the final. So we like, okay, yeah, bro, we might we might be legit. And then I come and do it again in uh in Memphis, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's that's what it okay, and this this felt yeah. so, a that, that Memphis race was impressive too. The first time we had a, a 1.7, you know, the second mm -hmm. time was a negative 0 0.5. So mm -hmm. I'm like, but I felt myself like lifting through and it felt so much easier and so much more fluent. Like you said, it was picking them up, putting them down. And I'm like, okay, that felt like practice. Mm -hmm. And you know, I get mm -hmm. I was third 9 8 in Zagreb, which was my last race. Yep. And it felt the same way. It was like just lifting. Like I and like I, I think I think that it's a lot of it is attributed to getting a little stronger. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Raina's program is, is is really legit, and it's gotten. Mm -hmm. I've gotten like when I came here. You know, admittedly, I was cleaning with the women, and that's not a knock to the women. Yeah. It's just I couldn't. I yeah. couldn't do. You know, I don't think I, I think I was doing like like 80, 85 kilos at best, struggling. I'm talking about couldn't even come up under it. And then you know, over the you know over the uh, over time, mm -hmm. I started getting, you know, it, it, everything starts shaping up. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me ask you this then. So, so what you see on your sites for this year then? Oh man, listen, I just plan on uh, titles. Let's go with that. Say it again. Oh, you kind of messed up. Let me, let me back. Hello. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. So, 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 let me ask you this then. What's your, what's your plan for outdoor this year then? Outdoor like, if you just say right now, ready, I, I, right now, I feel like I'm going after this number. Oh, yeah. And I know we don't ever talk about time because we just like, hey, man, look, whatever oh, yeah. the clock say, what the clock say. Ultimate but goal. what do you feel like is in your reach? Man, the ultimate goal is to be a world champion. Like you said, man, everybody's right here. Like, we got, you know, we got a couple, we got two nine sevens and we got a bunch of nine eights. Like, everybody's in the mix. You know what I'm saying? And you don't, you know, they, like you said, mm -hmm. you don't know, you know, how what we're doing and how we're training. We might get a couple more nine sevens. So I plan on bringing home a title. Like, mm -hmm. That's what we go. But you know, if that don't happen, some hardware. I need some hardware. I've been around this game too long to you know. <laughs> and say, I'm not leaving this mother truck without something. <laughs> hey, hey, look here. When I get here, either hell or high water. What's gonna happen is either I'm gonna get one, two, three, or 
I might have to go one, two, three on y'all and, and take one of them. Right. <laughs> it was hard. Right. Well, preferably I'm gonna get it this way. <laughs> You're right, man. I like something, man. Hey, hey, well, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I always like, you know what I'm saying, talking with y'all because it really just kind of bring me back into that vibe. Like, oh man, like shit, nigga. Like this week here, like Nero's games. And, and, you know, it's always funny because people always, you know, they try me on Twitter and everything, like, when I be critiquing y'all, what you know? So then I had to show somebody when I was up there in the middle. I was like, bro, don't you know, I went sick. I got Mike Warren with six. Mike Warren with um 50, like, 52. Leroy Dixon got second with 54, and I went 55. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here trying to explain to people, like, bro, like, y'all don't understand, like, I'm old. <laughs> Six five was moving back then. We talking about two thousand and eight, Jack. That was twelve. Then look here. I ain't had no special Nike spikes, no Boeing. I ain't no. I ain't had nothing in Texas Tech surface. That's all putting up, putting it down, Jack. Like shit, I don't pay my stripes. I ain't got no hardware, but damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I feel where you coming from. One one thousand, one thousand percent. Hey, so I gotta I gotta switch gears off of you and talk about track and field real fast before I gotta get off here. Oh yeah. How you feel about um the girl I had on yesterday, Mary Beth? Did you know about her? Yeah. The, the girl from seven o. Actually, um, in college I dated a girl that was on a team. At FSU I dated a girl that was from Colorado. So I think Mary Beth was like a and she was a state champion her year, and I think Mary Beth ended up coming back after her, and she would like tell me about there's some other girl that's you know that's out there that's killing it, and I end up seeing like some of her stuff. Yeah, she went um the, the 708. Did you see it? Yeah. So tell me what you took from it. <laughs> Let me Biden. The girl was moving, man. Like everything, like, it was I'm not gonna lie, like it was such a well executed race. Like I didn't really know what to, you know, we mm -hmm. athletes we look at it and you like, okay, like you're looking at the steps, you're looking at the, mm -hmm. the end angles, you're looking at everything, you're like, damn, what can she really clean up? <laughs> Where, does, where do you go from here? Like, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that she's popped out. I'm just yeah. saying that it like, all right, like when you, you know, you and you, you got some people that judge really, really hard. Mm -hmm. so they be like, oh, I found this, I got you here, but start to finish. Yeah, like I had on the show and I literally on the spot tried to find the, the stuff wrong, and I was like, honestly, man, look, <laughs> and that was the reason why I wanted her on the show because, again. Let's just call it what it is. For 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 a white girl to run that fast, that's that's blazing. And and I'll explain to people why it's blazing because genetically, like I try and explain to people, genetically, our genetic makeup with our calf muscles, with our tendons, that's why we're so fast. So when somebody like that does it, it's like it, it stands out more to me because it's like you're not supposed to do that, but you can do it and it can be done, and we've seen it done before. The reason why she's able to do it, though, is literally because, like I try to tell people, same thing you do, front side mechanics. It's physics. If she, she, it's not that she's faster than everybody else. She's just more trained out. than everybody else. That's it. Like, I'm telling you, like, the difference between her and everybody that was in that race is she executed from start to finish. No getting around it. Like, you can't take it away from her. It's, that's not speed. That's execution. So, the way I looked at it was, well, it's gonna be exciting when this 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 women's hunted <laughs> get outside. I was like, man, that's it's so nothing. Ooh, man. It's All awesome. right, so check this out. I do want to ask you a question though. I, I did forget it. Well, one more question I wanted to ask you. Do you feel like, and you tell the truth, tell how you want to, do you feel like you would have been a better fit on that Olympic four by one? I'm not calling out no names and saying who you could have replaced, yada, yada, yada. But do you feel like you could have been a better fit so that we would have actually brought some home? Oh, I, yeah, absolutely, man. Listen, I'm a utility, man. They could have put me on any leg, any any spot. I feel like I'm definitely one of our better options. And, I mean, I just got to go out there and prove it, you know. So yeah. that starts with, you know, getting through three rounds of USAs and, you know, put my, get myself a spot on a relay. So, you know, yeah. I ain't going to about it, but I'm, I'm going to be about it and I'm going to show. Yeah. Because you got hurt at, US, at the trials, right? So, so walk, talk, talk me through that. Like, what happened, man? So after the after the after day one, I ran. I ran to like it was a it was a crappy race. Like the race was terrible in the prelims, mm -hmm. but I won the heat with like ten oh oh. I know. I hit the line and I look at the clock and I'm like, like that was ten. I I I like I I hit line like I know that was like ten one because it just I was working like I'm doing everything mm -hmm. I can. You know I got Chris, Chris Belcher. 
to my left, and he, you know, I just all I see is arm is right here. You know, he broke him and come up. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I get to the line, and actually, if you see the if you see the race, like I hit the line and kind of died down. He like, you know, kept running through. So I'm like, I know that was like 10 one. I see 10 oh. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm here. Like, okay, I all right. So I come back next day, go through the same process, man. Listen, I ate the same thing. I drunk, I did the same exact thing I did day one, day two. Like I wanted the same, we did everything the same. Like, okay, like now we're gonna work on that back half of the race. We're gonna, you know, so we're gonna execute a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You know, we we they shoot the gun the first time. I'm in the semi with uh Fred to my left, running to my right. They shoot the gun the first time, we get mm-hmm. out about 10 meters. I get a good start, they call it back. I'm like, okay, Marvin, just same thing, same thing. And people don't understand, you know, for a sprinter, like that ain't really optimal. Like you so programmed to go when you hit that gun, then you gotta come back and reset. You dial back in. I'm like, okay, just do it again. Mm-hmm. I hit it again. I'm like, oh, I'm gone. Man, I felt like a little flicker, lower left hamstring. And I thought of, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'd be lying to you if I thought of, if I said I wasn't gonna run through it. I was like, man, just run through it. Get to the finals and we're gonna see what happened. But I took a step and it started hurting a little bit. I'm like, all right, man, I ain't, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna play with that. Mm-hmm. I pull out, I pull out of the race or whatever, and you know, whatever happens after that. And I'm sad to admit that, like four or five days later, man, I was like good again. Yeah, yeah. I was so hurt. Like I, bro, I stayed in my house for like four days. I was like, come on, man. Like I didn't pull it. I didn't tear it. Like I, four days. I was back, like running, like no pain, no uncomfort, no nothing. Because I actually raced in Stockholm, like a, like a week and a half later. I raced mm-hmm. in, think running, ended up winning. Yeah, I, go there, I, I thought that. I run in Budapest. That's when I kind of some being they end up running 984. But I'm like, okay, at least I'm healthy. So now we got to figure I ran 1002. So I ran 1019 mm-hmm. in Stockholm. I ran 1002 in Budapest. I'm like, okay, I'm healthy. I can, I'm, I'm good now. So mm-hmm. the lab, and then after the Olympics, second half of the season, I put that put that work in, and that's what happened. How did it make you feel knowing that you was ready to go to Tokyo and didn't get to go to Tokyo? Man, it 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 hurt. Uh, like you don't understand. Like it hurt. Uh, it, it's it's crushing because you know I'm watching on TV. I'm trying to support my boys and all the people I know running, but it's like I'm sitting there like, dog. I'm really I'm really supposed to. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching this damn TV. I'm really supposed to be here because in 16 I wasn't supposed to make that team. So in 16 I made it. You know what I'm saying? On a whim. So 2021 coming in, fully prepared, man, and already having good times, put down in the season, like feeling like, oh, I'm going to make the team. Like I got what it takes to actually make the team. Like I'm, I'm prepared mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. It's mm-hmm. all- and to not, to not, man, it was, it was humbling. It was, it, it was painful, but you just mm-hmm. got to go from it. And that's what makes, you know, certain athletes as great as they are. Yeah. Now, when you say humbling, because I've been there. I've been there. I've been there multiple times. That's why, like I tell people, when, when I finally made the team in 2009, I I wasn't I wasn't crying because I was happy. It was more like I, I'm crying because I'm so rejoiced because y'all don't understand how much heartbreak it took to get to this top three. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all see yeah. these tears, like, oh, he's so happy. I'm like, about time. God, they're going to be trapped so long. Like, I can't take it, though. Man, <laughs> if I don't make it easy, I'll kill myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's boy. Them, three, them, two, them two days, me, boy, you be like, man, you be on edge, boy. You... <laughs> <laughs> people don't understand. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you know you got your show, man, so people can actually talk to us and get to, you know, you get to. Do a real interview and not like the, the politically correct, you know. Man, listen. The real, like, bro, it'd be stressful out there, bro. Like, I, 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 I would love to tell y'all it come easy, bro. If anybody tell you that they lying, they it's lying a hundred times over, and that's why, like, when I be finding the the, the, the fans, I'd be like, no, leave the athletes alone. Y'all don't understand what an L is to us. A L to us ain't just no all to the next race. Bro, you be on, you really be in the hotel room with a bottle thinking like, like man, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this shit, bro. See, people, <laughs> a, lot know, a lot of people don't know that they had Morgan Relays me. I think Trey opened up with like 1001. Mm-hmm. I ran the prelims in that meet. I ran like 1063. I mean, I hurt my hamstring in the race. I stumbled and hurt my hamstring in the race. Mm-hmm. I never, you know, I never said it publicly because I mean, people don't give a damn about that. Like, I don't, you know, they don't care about it. They just see 10, 1063. I'm like, hold on, yep. man. Never ran no 1063. <laughs> hey, hey. Man, I'm talking, man. Look, I looked at Raina after the race. I'm like, hey, man, hey, bro, I ain't 
No more. <laughs> no more. I ain't run no ten six. Mm -mm. Done, done. And, and that, and that's like I say, that's why I got ready to say to try and get us to keep opening up to these people so they'll understand and learn more, just learn more even about our sport. You know what I'm saying? Like what we go through. Like, like literally, and that's why we try to tell people, like, man, mental depression when it comes to track and field is 100 percent correct. But it ain't because we depressed, you know what I'm saying? It ain't none of that. It's the sport that do it. Like when you got that competitive nature, you got that competitive edge, you start questioning yourself too much. Like, what did I do wrong? Like, what, what did I not do right? Like you said, like, man, I did, I ate the same stuff. I, I had the same meal. Like, that's where the mental depression come in because you're trying to figure out what the what the hell happened. And like, like, what, like what happened? I don't know what happened, bro. I just you ain't <laughs> Yeah, like I was, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't now people don't understand, man, that it ain't it ain't yeah, when you running fast and you in a groove, it's a little bit different. But when mm -hmm. you stuff out, or when you go through injuries and stuff like that, you know, it can be season altering because it's that's the worst possible time. That yep. could, like you make the team, you know, the money's different, everything's different. Like every, your season lined up different. I make the team, I might get into I might get in the Brussels. I didn't get in the Brussels. I ain't got no diamond league points. I ain't I ain't getting the pre, I didn't get in the Brussels, I don't got no diamond league points. We got people mm -hmm. In the Diamond League final, PB like ten thirty. I'm like, oh come on now, hey. <laughs> and, and, and and that and and that and that be and that be the thing. And, and I'm glad you said that too because I experienced that from 2003 to 2009. You know, I made the team in 03 for a relay, made team in 05, missed 07, right? So when I made the team in 09, I never forget it. I had just left the um just left the track, you know what I'm saying? New Bandit was already going back to the hotel to get my contract. And I got everything ready to go. I was I walked right past Emmanuel Hudson, still had my stuff on. Keep in mind, shout out to Emmanuel Hudson, love that dude. I've been knowing Emmanuel since 2003, right? 2009. You know, he ain't really ever spoke to me at all. Like at all. You feel me? Like walk past me, like, you know. Bro, tell me why as soon as I got out the out the uh, the little shuttle. He was out there. He was like, Ray, what's up? And then he shook my hand and he was like, you you in here now. You one of us now. And I'm like, look, I've been running. But now I understood <laughs> what he meant at that point. Because then, oh, lane draws, man. Like, what? They fell in my lap. I would turn them down at that point. Like, I literally can remember being at, at the crib and my agent was like, Ray, you got lane in London for the 200. And, and this after Nike done gave me all the money. I done made the team and I got lanes. You know what I'm like, bro? You know what, John? I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just changed up so much. And it, it, it's not even fair how, how, it, how it do that because. 20, 2014, 24. So for those, for those who don't know me, I came out after like indoors of my freshman year at Florida State. I never really made it. I did. Florida relays and then I left. Literally right after that, like I left the school, left the program, turned pro. So they brought me overseas. They're like, "Oh, want you to get a little bit experience? You know, we're gonna bring you over." We stayed in Amsterdam, and we went. I went, but I did what's called, you know, I know y'all people call it the chilling circuit. Go so having five nights in the back team then. Go ahead, keep going. No, no, I'm saying I was saying that in 2014 I did some races. Well, no, it was the end of 2013. I'm sorry. In 2013 I did, you know, what we would call the chilling circuit. And for those who don't know what the chilling circuit is, it's kind of some meets in like the back <laughs> of hey. like. The most random countries, bro. I can't tell y'all where I was. I can point out on the map right now. I don't know. I don't know. That chilling circuit, boy. That chilling circuit, well, man. Bro. I'm talking about the prize money and cash. It might be one fifty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, listen, you 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 fly. You might fly into Paris, but <laughs> driving about five hours until you know what I'm saying. You don't know Paris where is where you landing at. It's a whole five hour drive where you get the boo bunk kunk kunk up there in the hills, and you like somewhere, but. Uh, yeah. Because you know, like I said, that stuff is humbling because you see this and you're like, okay, but then you get the diamond league treatment and all that stuff, and you get the mm -hmm. level. But I started, you know, I started, I came in down here, like I'm you know, I'm a wide eye rookie, I don't really know nothing about you know the circuit or none of that. And as I got older and you know, got a little bit better, I started getting into you know, getting into races and stuff like that. So it's definitely, it's definitely an experience, man. And you know, I wish that I wish that the fans could actually see that side of this. Oh, they're gonna see that side here very soon. That's that's race take jump. It's <laughs> in true. That, cause, cause that's what I tell people. Like, but I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, some of my, I use the word funnest. Some of my funnest times on the circuit was on the Chitlin circuit, because on the Chitlin circuit, you really, you stuck in a country that is like, I really don't know nothing. So now I, my fun gonna come from us just being in the lobby. You know what I'm saying? Or going somewhere and doing something. 
I feel like the chitlin circuit was so much more relaxed. So a lot of times you ran faster at the chitlin circuit because it was just a kickback. You know what I'm saying? But then <clears throat> I know for me, the Diamond League part, I enjoyed the Diamond League because simple fact that once you end on the Diamond League, you end. Yeah. And that was why everybody kind of, you know, was I ain't gonna say giving me gripe, but it was like, you got the best agent there he is because you in every Diamond League. Me, right. I'm like, no, Jack, I made a world championship team. I made it to the semis at the world championships. Right. I finished tenth with a bad hamstring. From the rest of my career, yeah. Ray Allen's gonna get a lane now. That's just the, that's the politics of it. And right. I'll never forget Terrence Tremell <laughs> telling me that. So I teach it. He was like. Bro, that's just what it is. Like, cause I used to complain. I used to be like, why I can't get these lanes? I'm running fast. And he'll like, just wait your turn. Your and turn. then when it flipped, I was like, hey man, look, I can't I, look, man. I ain't got nothing to do with that, Jack. You know what I'm saying? I just they want me. I'm running 10 2, but I still got lane. You know, bro, <laughs> second meet, I think my second meet of my career, bro. I raced Francis over Quaylu. I'm like, hold on, bro. Like this <laughs> like third nil. <laughs> hey, nah. <laughs> why he here? You know what I'm saying? Like, but this is like it's 2013. I'm like. What's Francis over quick? I know you, bro. You ain't slick. Like he on the court. <laughs> oh no, y'all. This is a setup. What? <laughs> no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Look, two more stories, and we're gonna get off this thing. So that same thing happened to me with Gat. <laughs> hey, I forgot what what country I was in, but this is when Gat was making his comeback. You know what I'm saying? Like at his suspension. So this is 2010, 2011. I'm already running fast. So the little meet that I was going to, I was the favorite to win it. You know, Ray L was coming in. My agent got me. Oh, you know, my parents be good. <laughs> I get there and get is in the lobby. But at the same time, you know, my boy, I'm like, get you back, you racing. In my mind, I'm not worried about Justin Gatlin. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you've been off, yada, yada, yada. Tell me why we had two rounds. First round, Pahaya get gone. Drop 10, 12, and I went like 17. I'm like, yeah, you mess with my money right now. All I'm saying, you play with my money right now. Second round, same thing happened. So th that'd be the funny part about it. Like, you be in a chitlin circuit, and then somebody like Overquaylu, somebody like Gat will pop up and throw your whole money off. Girl, stop You're like, man, I was supposed to win this shit, call, man. What's going on? I call Stop like that, too. I went to a meeting, I, I never forget, I went to a meeting in Houston, Belgium. First of all, it's a little last last minute thing. They, they throw me on a plane. I'm in a huge, I don't even know a huge in Belgium. Matter. So they throw me on a plane. I get there. I'm I don't see nobody. You know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I check in, everything good. I'm like, oh, this is a little low-key meet. Like, I'm finna, you know, scrape me up, you know, 1500, like everything straight. But I come down, I think I came down for dinner. Captain Bladman was my training partner. They didn't even tell me he was gonna be there. He walk in, he, he come to check in. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. No, I get to the cafeteria, software in there. I'm like, and this was this is first race back off his band. I'm mm -hmm. like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I end up winning the meet with 10 12. I'm like, okay, we good. <laughs> I go to a meet, I go like like two weeks later, I go to a meet in uh um Belém, Brazil. Belém. It's so I, I, ran, I ran in Belém. My PR actually came, my 200 PR came from Belém. But it's so hot, they run the meet it's, at like seven in the morning. Yeah. In the morning, like 12, 12 30, the whole track meet's over with. And man, drop yeah. like hell on me easy. I ain't seen him say. <laughs> ain't seen him say. Hey, okay. hey, hold on. Let me make sure I clear this up for the people that are, that's watching and the people that's gonna watch. We're not talking like we scared. It's about the money. <laughs> like, if ain't nobody there, I ain't gotta work that hard. I, I can wave and skate. But now, if one person show up in this chitlin circuit, it ain't but four, five thousand dollars we racing for, man. Why, why you had to show up? <laughs> oh, I mean, like, like, this is, come on now. Yeah, give me some paper. Yeah, we got it. Nah, now we gotta actually race each other. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. So I, I I I feel you on that and on the um the standby list. So I actually it happened to me a couple of times. I mean, I was in Rome one time, right? Rome. Lady flew me in. I was on the standby list. They was like, Ray, um, in case somebody drop out, we would like for you to be the next person. John, put me on the plane. Cause what people don't understand is, like you were saying with that standby stuff, you won't find out until like the day of if you're racing or if you're not. 
But the beautiful part about being on standby is you still going there for free, whether you race or not. <laughs> you in a hey, it's a free trip. That's how I look. That I told John, John, anyway, let's put me on it, baby. <laughs> sure, because if nothing else, I'm gonna go kick it. <laughs> I'm gonna watch the race. All of that stuff. Hey, bro. Hey, we've been on this thing for almost an hour. We don't went way past no exactly an hour, but that what happened when we get to get to talking and rapping and all that good stuff. So I, I'm I'm gonna wrap it up and I and we're gonna have to do this again uh, after you go out there this weekend because I already know what's gonna happen. So you gonna have to you gotta give me a post race yes, post sir. race race take. You know what I'm saying? And then then I'm gonna make you and Trey both be on the same time. Be like. Yeah. Yeah. Whoop you. <laughs> jokes, man. Nah, I, I, listen, man. I definitely appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I, hey, man. I appreciate y'all, boys, man. Like, like I say, man. I, I I do this for y'all to make sure that y'all get a chance to say what you want to say. You know what I'm saying? Because what people don't understand, Twitter only give you so many characters. Instagram only gonna give you sixty seconds. Race Tag gonna give you enough time to say whatever you want to say, so people can really know who you are. And that's just that. Hey, man, enjoy the rest of your evening. I appreciate you for stopping by here. I know these people did. I know they had a lot of questions. I'm sorry, y'all, we didn't get to y'all questions because we got to talking like we on the phone. I forgot we was even on the yeah. TV show. <laughs> <laughs> now, I appreciate okay. you, man. Thank you so much, dog. Listen, man, like I said, I'll talk to you any given time, man. Hey, man, I appreciate it, brother. So, hey, enjoy your night, and I'll talk to you after the race this weekend. All right, man. All right, brother. All right, y'all. Another race take. That guy, my guest, Marvin Bracey, the homie. He's really, 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 really cool. Real cool, real cool guy. Real cool guy. So, um, hope y'all enjoyed the show. I'm sorry we didn't get to y'all questions. We'll get to them next time. And uh, I told y'all, that's my pick. That's my pick for this weekend. As always, hey, love each other. Love yourself like I love y'all. Out of here.